run and pray. People gotta run and pray. Ugh. Good morning. Um, I uh, took a shower first before this, which is quite unusual, y'all. Just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, I felt filthy. And sometimes when I feel filthy enough, I'm like, maybe I should gain myself, cleanse myself a little bit in the non-spiritual uh, sense uh, before entering into Congress with my blessed and holy creator. Uh, and so I did so. There you go. Luke 6.41 is today's. And it's funny because I just referenced this uh, last week in my new show, um, uh, the, the text version, because I don't have a camera right now. Uh, hence why these look the way they do. There we go. And why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? One of my favorite examples of Old Testament humor. Uh, in another translation, it says plank, which I think is way funnier. Um, because a plank is like, I think it actually in a measurement was like a seven foot or something like that around a uh, seven foot beam. Or the beam, I think is another one. Or the beam that is in your eye. So you think of a, you know, a little speck. He's got a little, got a little, you know, just a little sliver, a little splinter, a little something in his eye. You're like, hmm, that is causing you to sin. And uh, meanwhile, you have a, a beam that would hold, you know, an entire dwelling. That would, that would lace the entire ceiling of a dwelling in your eye. 20 feet, again, knocking into people, smashing stuff. Uh, everywhere you turn, it's like a silent comedy. People have to sort of duck. Um, or maybe Warner Brothers, Chuck Jones directed. But what is this really pointing at besides just trying to make me giggle? Now, my first caution in this is that... Um, one of the things this can do negatively, and here I am being critical already, but just having uh, having known, don't let this draw you into silence, first and foremost. Don't let this draw you into silence that you're never supposed to say anything about anybody's behavior at any time. What it is telling you to do is check yourself before you wreck yourself. Check yourself. If you, especially if you specifically have an issue, come with humility and be like, I have the same problem, therefore. If you are struggling with the same problem, maybe you're not even the person to talk to this person about this thing. If you're still struggling with that, talk to somebody who's struggled with that and been released, been relieved. Send them to talk to this other person. Too often, we spend a lot of time uh, looking outside ourselves. I know, I'm very, uh, from, from a very either natural or nurture sense, uh, critical, critical thought. I wrote uh, criticism, journalism uh, for a while um, and came to it quite simply, finding the flaws in things. And listen, there's nothing wrong with that. You always need somebody to be like, hey, that's going to fall down if you put that there or don't put that there. But the person who does that always, either through humor or that is their general humor, um, then A, people get sick of you real quick, uh, and B, if you're spending that much time paying attention to what everybody else is doing, uh, your self-examination is going to lack. Merely just not having enough hours in the day to criticize everybody else and yourself. Let your heart be right in all circumstances. Your first order of business is glorify God. Okay, can you do that by, by speaking against ills, things people are doing that are sinful, destructive, that are uh, waylaying their own path right before your eyes? Yes, of course you can. Of course you can. And it, we've all seen intervention. That isn't a terrible thing. There are people who are running around with big logs and specks in their eye, man, looking at the world through uh, certain needs, desires, addictions, lusts. <laughs> Selfishness, self-governance, rejection of God. And yes, of course, you can speak on those things. But examine your own heart. Speak not out of anger. Speak not out of uh, fury. 
but speak, speak in the humility that you know you too have specs, have logs, always. I am being perfected through Christ, but I am not perfect. I might be perfect in the sight of God by the atonement of God himself, but I'm not perfect in the eyes of others, and it would be ignorant of me to behave so, and alienating of me to behave so, certainly. So check yourself. Check yourself daily. Ask God to check you. Ask your friends to check you. I find the less I criticize, the more people actually pay attention when I do have something that is, like, cautionary to say. You know, there are some who never seek to, don't ever want to judge or say anything. Don't go that way either, man. Do not go that way. We are to be salt of this earth, you know? We are to we are to, to move in righteousness and speak righteousness and truth and warn those against the death and destruction that leaning on their own understanding or believing in their own righteousness will lead them. The same for ourselves. First and foremost, check yourself. You will and don't ever wait for yourself to be perfect to speak. Because that would that would take forever, till eternity. And by then, for some it will be too late. And we are to be soldiers and saviors on this field of battle. Amen. Are you with me? Say la.